go be going over a couple of different things. So first we're gonna go over the pre-op care and instructions, what to expect during your stay at the hospital and uh, details about the procedure. And lastly, going over any uh, post-op um, instructions and considerations for your recovery. So before your knee replacement, um, the main thing we want to make sure that you're uh, well enough for surgery is to make sure you're medically cleared. And this involves looking at other medical conditions you may have, um, like diabetes or heart disease or anything like that, and making sure that those are stable enough for you to undergo a surgery like a knee replacement. And this involves getting surgical clearance from your primary care provider, or if you're under the care of a cardiologist, you'll need to get clearance from them. And we do this in, in two different ways. First, it's based off your age. If you're greater than 60 years old, you will need to see your primary care provider and we'll fax them a, a list of things medically that we need them to uh, evaluate in order for you to be cleared for uh, surgery. And then, um, or if you're under the care of a cardiologist, we will send them a sheet as well that um, states specifically what we need in order for you to proceed with surgery. Um, if you're less than 60 years old, then um, the EKG, uh, which is a study of your, your heart, the electrical activity of your heart can be done at the hospital. Um, the primary, you don't need to see your primary care provider um, unless you have other uh, pre-existing conditions that may uh, compromise your surgery. And then everybody, uh, about two weeks before uh, surgery, needs to have lab work, preoperative lab work, and registers at Legion uh, Hospital um, beforehand. And then other considerations in preparing for surgery is assembling your medical and personal information. This includes any medications that you may take, any uh, other doctors that you see, just having these on a physical document um, will be helpful in case there's a reason that the um, electronic medical system doesn't have those for whatever reason. If you have any advanced uh, directives, power of attorneys, those sort of things, um, copies of your insurance, those are all good to have on hand before you go to the doctor in case, before you go into the hospital in case uh, for whatever reason we're not able to access those and that delays your surgery. Okay, and now we're gonna go over what you can do specifically in terms of uh, preparing your house, preparing for your hospital stay, and just other considerations. So, uh, preparing your house um, after a knee replacement, uh, the mobility and your ability to get around the house may be a little bit limited um, as you start your uh, physical therapy and your pain gets under control. And so, doing simple tasks like cooking meals or uh, cleaning, those can probably uh, may become a little uh, difficult afterwards. And so before surgery, if you're able to, uh, preparing any meals beforehand and freezing them or uh, purchasing meals that are easy to make in the microwave or oven uh, can help with uh, making things easier after your surgery. And then this goes along with getting your house ready as well. Um, if you have any um, loose uh, cords or loose rugs, any tripping hazards that are present in the house um, probably need to be removed so you don't uh, increase the risk of you falling or tripping after surgery. Um, if you have uh, walk-in showers or uh, those sort of things, installing any safety rails or handles to allow you to have a little bit more stability afterwards, um, the surgery would be advised. And then uh, specifically going to prepare for your hospital stay, the main thing is you need to arrange for a ride home, um, have somebody that can pick you up from the hospital uh, after the surgery because you won't be able to drive. If you don't have anybody to take you home, then uh, a um, social worker within the hospital 
will meet with you and discuss your options to get you uh, back home after, after discharge. And then what to bring specifically for your hospital stay. Uh, you wanna wear comfortable, loose fitting clothes, clothes that are easily removable um, and that are easy to put on, especially after surgery. And um, like I said, copies of any insurance or health directives, um, medication list or anything like that. And then leaving any jewelry, cash or other valuables at home can, uh, is strongly recommended. That way you, we don't uh, misplace those during your hospital stay. And other general considerations uh, that can benefit your health uh, before surgery and especially after surgery, uh, avoiding alcohol use for uh, 48 hours before surgery, as this can affect, uh, may have some interaction with the anesthesia uh, that we use. And then, um, avoiding any tobacco use, smoking, especially beforehand, um, as tobacco can use, uh, especially smoking can um, interfere with your uh, lungs, which could um, interfere with anesthesia during your surgery and afterwards, because uh, tobacco use is, um, can, uh, contribute to poor wound healing and delay your recovery. And now here's the timeline before surgery, uh, what we um, recommend to all patients. So about a week before surgery, you'll stop any blood thinners. These include uh, aspirin or any other um, Sorelto or any of those blood thinners that you're on for whatever reason. Um, if you are if you um, shave your legs, we wanna minimize the risk of infection or introduction of a risk, introduction of an infection to the surgical area. And so we ask you to avoid shaving your legs three days before. And then if you take any medications for diabetes, such as metformin, we ask that you stop these two days before because these can have some complications with your kidneys during surgery. Uh, one day before surgery, uh, the night before and the morning of, you'll take a bath or shower using the HippoCleanse soap. HippoCleanse is a special antibiotic or antibacterial uh, cleaner that you can buy at Walgreens or CVS or any other pharmacy store um, that allows you to clean the surgical area to decrease the risk of infection. And then you'll uh, not be able to eat or drink anything after midnight the night before your surgery. Um, and then the morning of your surgery, You'll be able to take uh, your medications. Uh, these medi if you take medications for your blood pressure, thyroid, anxiety, depression, you'll be able to take these in the morning with sips of water. And then, um, when you before uh, you arrive to the hospital, you'll get there about two to three hours before your start time. Uh, our surgery schedulers will call you uh, to confirm your start time and. The reason you come that early is so they can get all the preoperative uh, planning done in terms of uh, getting you ready for surgery. And now we're gonna discuss what uh, happens during your knee replacement and uh, expectations during your hospital stay. And so here's a little animation that goes over your knee replacement. Total knee arthroplasty or replacement is a surgical procedure in which a diseased or damaged knee joint is replaced with an artificial joint. Your knee is made up of the lower end of your thigh bone or femur, the upper end of the shin bone or tibia, and the kneecap or patella. Most replacement joints consist of a metal femoral component, a plastic tibial component held in a metal tray, and a plastic patellar component. The procedure begins with an incision on the front of the knee and the kneecap is moved to the side. Damaged bone and cartilage at the end of the femur are cut away and the bone is measured and cut to fit into the femoral component, which is then attached. Next, damaged bone and cartilage at the top of the tibia are cut away and the bone is measured and cut to fit into the tibial component. 
A metal tray is fit against the flat cut top of the bone with its stem inserted into the bone. A plastic insert is snapped into the tibial tray. The femoral component slides on it when the knee is bent. The damaged portion of the kneecap may be replaced by a mushroom-shaped prosthesis. The resectioned patella and prosthesis are attached to other components. Measurements and tests to ensure balance and movement are done during and after surgery. Knee replacement can significantly reduce pain and improve function. Like all surgery, there are associated risks. Physical therapy and realistic expectations are important for successful recovery. All right, so just to reiterate what that animation said, um, this, the knee replacement surgery is a procedure done under general anesthesia, meaning the anesthesiologist will put you completely out and you'll be um, under anesthesia for the duration of the procedure. As well, uh, anesthesia will perform a regional nerve block, meaning uh, putting those nerves that innervate the knee to sleep to provide extra uh, pain uh, management and um, anesthesia during the procedure. The procedure itself lasts approximately 1 to 1.5 hours and antibiotics are given at the beginning of the procedure and uh, will be given to you during the duration of your stay in the hospital. And most patients stay uh, typically one night in the hospital and are discharged uh, around lunchtime the following day. And the procedure itself, uh, like the animation said, is a resurfacing of the knee joint rather than an actual cutting out bone and replacing it. So the, fem the femur component uh, is replaced with that, um, the arthritic bone is shaved off and replaced with that uh, metal component. The tibial component is done the same. And then in between the uh, two components is a plastic polyethylene spacer that acts as the new uh, cartilage as well as the new meniscus. In this procedure, uh, the ligaments on either side of your knee, the medial collateral ligament and the lateral collateral ligament are uh, spared and those are kept in place. The ligaments in the inside of your knee, the anterior cruciate ligament, that one is taken down um, and replaced uh, with the, the plastic spacer and um, the posterior cruciate ligament is, is uh, preserved and kept uh, in place there.